Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum. Update Monday, May 15th, around 8 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Put a crown on it. Saturn shatters Jupiter's record for the most moons. Back in February, we reported that Jupiter, in, in fact, just broke the record for the most moons in our solar system, but... Saturn is now stealing the title back. Keep calm. It's boom time. East Coast faces severe weather threat, frost as well, in a wild week of weather. Thunderstorms and showers are expected across parts of the Northeast, while other areas will remain dry this week. And forecasters say there will be a heightened risk of wildfires across New England with a threat of Frost and freeze. Let's take a look. Severe thunderstorms Tuesday and Tuesday evening across the mid-eastern portion of the country. Flash flooding, hail, isolated tornadoes, damaging wind gusts to 50 to 60 miles per hour, potentially gusting to 70 here from Nashville east to Richmond. Take a look at that. Heads up Tuesday and Tuesday evening. Now, there are rounds of rainfall into midweek for the entire southeast, so heads up if you're in this region the rain will be pittering and pattering. And there is a frost and freeze risk for Wednesday night for most of the Northeast, dipping all the way down into the mountains of West Virginia and Virginia. Take a look at this. Hard freeze warnings for northern PA, lots of central New York, almost all of Vermont. It is all of Vermont. Most of New Hampshire and Maine. It's insane. So please, if you've planted anything, it may be a complete loss. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He said good riddance. Here is some updates on the severe weather threat. North Carolina weather. Severe storms possible in the triad Tuesday. All the links will be below so you can do your homework. Georgia weather. Severe weather threat Tuesday for extreme North Georgia. They are in that little cone of depression there. National Weather Service is now completing the damage assessment for Friday's severe weather. And there were at least 12 tornadoes reported in Nebraska during Friday's severe weather. It's true, at least 12 tornadoes have been confirmed from Friday's severe weather in Nebraska. Burt and Dodge counties had as many as five tornadoes, ranging from EF0 to EF2, according to the National Weather Service. In Stanton, Colfax, Platt, Madison, Pierce, and Boone counties, there were five EF1 and two EF unknown tornadoes, according to the National Weather Service. More results are expected in Pawnee and Richardson counties, where crews did not get over there this weekend. So they are assessing the strength, the distance, the length of the tornadoes, and assessing, um, yeah, well, an EF rating for all 12 tornadoes. And we are, in fact, in the peak of tornado season. May is, well, the peak. And there are an average of 253 tornadoes in the upper 48 during the month of May. Hey, hey, and we're a little low. So we've got a few more weeks to go, and that's bad news. We haven't had any really major tornadoes, EF4, 5, but that could change, so stay tuned for more boom. As the National Hurricane Center releases its first tropical outlook of the 2023 hurricane season, and it's looking pretty normal, and that's good news. Name storms, the average is 14 per year, and we're going to be right around average, lower, just below average. The number of hurricanes averages seven major hurricanes. We're going to be between six and eight. That's right about average, major... Major hurricanes, three, two to three. So we're right on average forecast, according to the National Hurricane Center. And they have dropped the names for the 2023 storms. And we will link this below for you, starting with Adrian and Beatriz, Calvin, Dora, Eugene, Fernanda, Greg, Hillary, Irwin, Yova, Kenneth, Lydia, Max, Norma, Otis, Pilar. Ooh, that's, that just hit me. I think Pilar is going to be a bad one. Ramon, Selma, Todd, Veronica, Wiley, Zena, Zork, York, and Zelda. I really think that Eugene and Pilar, I'm getting a feeling here, I'm just using my instincts, will be two of the worst. 
Kenneth will be no joke as well. Mark my words. Heat in the Pacific Northwest, critical fire weather in Alaska and Michigan. Excessive rainfall in the central U.S. Heat advisories continue today for part of the central coastal Pacific Northwest and the southern San Joaquin Valley in California. Dry, gusty winds will produce critical fire weather today in the northern lower Michigan and interior eastern Alaska. Excessive rainfall may bring flooding to southern Texas, the nexus of the Shmexis, and parts of Oklahoma into the Missouri River Valley today as well. Severe weather threats located just here in a small, tiny portion. High winds for northern Mish. And we've got those heat warnings, high winds, and flood watches for Washington and Oregon. So heads up, click on your county for more info. Here is the GFS model, and we'll just click it through so you can see that storm threat slowly moving through the center of the country there and moving offshore by Wednesday. And then it's pretty mild and quiet until we hit Friday and the weekend where some severe weather threats will explode near eastern Colorado and New Mexico. Let's take a look at the snowfall totals. They've been updated, and it's going to continue to snow until June. Can you believe that? Here is May 19th, May 20th, 21st, 22nd. We're going to see some snow in the high elevations of Colorado, snow moving into Utah, 24th, 25th, 26th. Snow in the high elevations of Wyoming, as well as Alberta and British Columbia. Snow in Washington State as well, May 27th. As we get into June, snow is going to fall in the Sierras, potentially, as well as Idaho. And it is looking like the snow may never end. Alaska's fourth coldest winter in a row. Low temperature records continue to fall down under. And May snow hits Europe, even Spain, as record frost sweeps the Ukraine and Russia. Here we can see the snow is going to continue to fall through the Alps well into the summer. Not a bummer. And heavy snow up in Scandinavia, specifically in Greta's boyhood home, where they're looking at potentially three or four feet of snow as we approach June. Hello! Al has nothing to say. Seismic update. We have continued enhanced activity in the Carib, including Puerto Rico to the north of the island and down south here. We're going to keep a close eye on this near the Windward Islands in the Barbados region uh, because Kick'em Jenny is down there, and we're going to keep a close eye on those subsurface volcanoes. No quakes of note in general. We've got some continental quakes in here, 3.5 in Alaska. Activity is kicking up a little bit in Hawaii. Biggest quake in the center of the country in western Colorado could be a frat quake at 3.1. Worldwide volcano news update. Well, just like the severe weather threat is quiet for the U.S. for a few days, Worldwide Volcano News Update is quiet, and all volcanoes are puffing and passing to normal parameters, including Semaru, Reventador, Ebeco, Cotopaxi, Suanos Hima, Suanos Jima, actually, and many others, all puffing to normal levels. Space Weather News Update, the sun has gone quiet at Solar Max. As predicted in a grand solar minimum pattern, let's look at the latest HMI intensity. It's embarrassing. Yeah, that's an embarrassing solar max sun. As the activity dropped down to the B range for 10 hours today, hey, hey, all solar indices are dropping off a cliff, and the three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet on the western front. Let's talk about solar storms. Super flares, major events that may take out the grid like the Carrington event. NASA thinks they can give us 30 minutes of warning before a killer solar storm hits Earth. That's good news. That means major substations and power central grid re regions will be able to shut down the grid prior to the event's arrival. This may save critical infrastructure. Now, I know you're wondering, 30 minutes? Is that enough time? Yes, because the signals that travel from the sun at the speed of light, radio signals, are faster than the actual plasma itself. The whole article will be linked below, and it's good news knowing that we have a hedge that may protect some of these power stations in the event of a moderate solar storm like the Carrington event, we could, or the 1989 Quebec event. If they could have shut down that station ahead of time, they would have saved, well, lots of the transformers. Now let's back to the head lead story, put a crown on it. Saturn shatters Jupiter's record for the most moons. Earlier, a few months ago, we reported 
in February that Jupiter had won the most moons in our solar system with 92, but now Saturn is stealing the title back. Yes, it's true. In February, scientists declared that Jupiter had the most moons of any planet in our solar system with 92 natural satellites, ripping the crown from Saturn's grasp. Now, Saturn has snatched it back in just a few months later as astronomers have found an additional 62 moons orbiting the ring planet, bringing its total to a whopping 145 moons. And that is a 145 moon boom for Saturn. How do you like them apples? Now, a article coming in. Uh, James Webb Space Telescope discovers water around a mysterious comet. Well, I thought all comets were dirty snowballs. Well, we actually landed on a few, and they turn out to be dry, rocky, electrified rocks. Yes, there's no ice or water on a comet, and this is no different. The study of Comet 238P slash Reed, which lurks in the main asteroid belt, will not help reveal the source of Earth's water, or it may, a vital ingredient of our life on the planet, but it is not sublimating from the comet. Here is an artist concept of 238P showing the main belt comet sublimating ice water vapor. I guarantee that the ice water vapor, quote unquote, is water that is being created in the magnetic field that is being created around the comet. Yes, I said it. Just like sun water is created in the chromosphere, I think that water is be being created in the electrical field in the coma of the comet. And we will know more as the study continues. What say you? Leave a comment below. CBS segment highlights how adding bugs to the food system could be a game changer to fight climate change. If you haven't picked up on Agenda 2030 and the depopulation program from the food lab, well, I don't think you've been listening for the greater part of the last decade. This is simply a way to make us sick and to reduce the population. Bugs are not for human consumption. In some countries where they eat bugs, it's because they have no other food product available. There are diseases and prion diseases in the carapaces of these crunchy critters that may be protein dense, but certainly not something other than a survival food, period. Grow your own food, buy some chickens, and purchase your meat locally. Here is more garbage coming out from the travel. 15 U.S. cities will be underwater by 2050. Well, why are people still building and buying waterfront homes for millions of dollars in these cities? Maybe it's because you're full of... <whistles> Just like anthropogenic global warming is complete scientific nonsense, greenhouse gases cannot physically cause the observed global warming, especially if we're talking about CO2, which is 0.04% of the atmosphere. Now, if you want to learn about real science, a paper coming out, whoa, what did I just push? A paper coming out on the 5th of May, the history of solar activity over millennia is completely amazing. This is in Living Reviews in Solar Physics. It is a massive expose that if you are not up to speed on all of the things that we talk about on this channel, this paper is for you. It's hundreds of pages long. It's literally a textbook of information on long-term behavior of solar activity on a multi-millennial time scale and what it means to Earth and other things on the planet. What we do know is we're heading into the next grand minima phase, which will last for decades. We've already begun. And we might need to hedge our bets on a solar storm or a grid down scenario or anything else nefarious that other countries may do to us like EMP threats or global war, terrorism. We never know. But it's always good to have peace of mind. That's why preppers aren't crazy. They are people that live life vicariously 
by having peace of mind and knowing that in any eventuality, they will be able to survive and thrive. And that's what we're hoping for all of you that are listening. And you can welcome to Eden. Oppenheimer Ranch visitors are now able to click on our own website, which is NASA-affiliated. Oppenheimer Ranch is now affiliated with NASA. And indoor farming made simple through Eden Grow Systems. Now we're introducing the Eden Grow Tower uh, with our project where you can grow anything anywhere. All you need is a little bit of electricity. The lowest electricity necessary to grow nutrient-dense food using, uh, a, well, a patented technique that I can't really tell you about, but it is aeroponics. And we're going to be setting up the system step-by-step -step with you in person with a new playlist at Oppenheimer Ranch Project called the Eden Grow Tower. Indoor farming made system. You can grow this in a dark hole, a cave, underground, five miles underground. All you need is a small amount of energy and the computerized system will do the work for you. We're going to show you the full build, the unboxing, the setup, how you plant the seeds and the results over the next 90 days. It's an exciting project and we have many projects that we plan and try to execute, but it is overwhelming for one man like myself to do it all. I have an entire ranch to plant and manage and all these projects that I want to do. We've got trips planned, the geoglyph tours, and on and on. I am exhausted, 16-hour days nonstop for eight years now. Please support the channel. Come over here to Eden Grow if you're looking to get involved with growing food anywhere. Check out some of the grow towers they have. If you click the link, you support the channel and you support your preparedness. Now, we don't know how well these systems work. We're going to be uh, assembling them step by step with you here over the next few weeks, planting them and showing you the results and how we can survive and thrive in the future in a grid down scenario if we have backup power and a little moxie. And that's a boom to knowledge. I hope you got something out of the video. I did. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. The most important thing you can do is share this video as we are shadow banned across YouTube. They don't want the general public to know what I'm saying, but you do. And we love you. Be safe. And that's a boom. Yeah.